I'm Ashton Addison from EventChain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Al Herzog, the CEO of DWeb. Al, welcome to the show, and it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. I know you've been around the tech and the blockchain space for a little while now, so I thought we could kick off the interview by hearing a little bit from you on your background and how that led up to you starting uh, with your team on DWeb. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I did start pretty early, 2011, got into Bitcoin and, uh, you know, started to think what I want to do. I've been an entrepreneur for over 20 years now. So, you know, immediately figure out that I want to build something in that space. I started a company called AppCoin in 2012 that did uh, user-generated currencies, it was not even over a blockchain, just just over a platform that allows that. And we, we did a lot of uh, local currencies here in Israel. It was very uh, interesting um, uh, project. Uh, uh, then uh, what we saw that happen is, is that Ethereum actually started to rise in uh, 2015, 16. And um, one of the key challenges that we had with those user-generated currencies is the ability to, let me silence that, is the ability to provide liquidity for those currencies, uh, mm -hmm. for user-generated currencies. And in order to provide liquidity, um, you know, they had to be listed on exchanges, and that just wouldn't wouldn't work for us because mm -hmm. you know, if you let anyone create a currency, how can it be liquid? And we had to find a solution for that, and that solution was Bancor. It was the you know what we all know today as the AMM uh, that everyone's using. Uh, that formula, uh, I actually built it on, on my Excel myself. I had to discover it. It didn't exist before, at least, you know, not, not anywhere I can find it. And, and we launched uh, Bancor in 2017. It was a big hit. Uh, you know, then the whole concept of tokens became like almost like a, you know, a, a bad thing. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. tokens were bad in 2018 and 19. They seem to be coming back to full, <laughs> back into fashion right now. But but there was like a pretty long dark period there, and um, you know we've been building all this time a lot of kind of infrastructure level. So the bank or network, as well as uh, a, a bridge to EOS blockchain, as well as uh, um, you know, new forms of, of uh, um, you know, interfaces and, and you know, uh, integration with wallets, all of those things. Uh, so we've been working on that uh, for quite some time. And, and in the you know, last year, I would say, we really got into the user-generated tokens mm -hmm. again. Um, and this time... You know, with the liquidity framework that was so desperately needed, and but one one thing that we figure out very fast is that in order to deliver an application that you 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 really target kind of mass adoption uh, with that application, then it even if if everyone is using it from your own domain, that's too centralized. That's mm -hmm. if, if all the user knows to come to your domain, it's already giving some single, you know, uh, central entity, too much power uh -huh. over the network. And and that sort of thinking, kind of one thing led to another, and, and it led, led me and the team to think about D-Web as, as a new concept, as a decentralized web. Uh -huh. And in that, in that decentralized web, we kind of took what we know, you know, I've been building online services for 20 years and it's always the same it's always the same so you have you have those who build a product they design it program it test it and you building great code and then you have those who kind of host the the product and provision the service those are the devops they, mm -hmm. they they don't care about building the product they just care about it you know being scalable working and you know functioning being good uptime and and and, and those are you know completely different group of people. And then you have uh, another very different group of people, which are the people that should deliver and sell this product to the end uh, you know customer or user. Those are like the marketing people, the kind of product market fit kind of people that that work on 
on on on on you know, the salespeople. All those people are are kind of the the front line to the customer. And today they, they are in a single company, mm -hmm. uh, always. And we figure out that kind of the one of the most basic thing that needs to be done and can be done for the first time ever is to to kind of you know break down this 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 link this molecule molecule and and say you know what you can have products that many can build modules for and many can operate and many can market but there's only one thing you need for that and that's a public database that all of them can use mm -hmm. you need a public database for that and we never had a public database now we have a pretty advanced one you know at this time you can actually provide free services on public databases because blockchain technology have come so far in within a decade mm -hmm. but we didn't have that just like we didn't have a public network before the internet we had a lot of private networks we didn't have a public network mm -hmm. guess what you know after decades of private networks here comes the public network and you couldn't recognize the world after 20 years mm -hmm. public database is a much stronger premise but we need to understand that that when you build application on on on, on public database they're not built like today with a centralized monolith like facebook or amazon they are built like open source software by an ecosystem mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that they have to be open source it can be a lot of closed source modules but it's an ecosystem that build that not a specific entity and it's an ecosystem that operates them and it's an ecosystem that market provide support, sells them, price them. Just like, you know, the, from all the online services that we use today, which, which is the most important thing is the online service. From all the online services, there's only one online service which is public. You know what this one is? What is it? Email. It's email. Email. It's the only public online service in existence. Mm -hmm. Everything else is fully owned, fully proprietary, mm -hmm. fully centralized. It's the only one. And the reason it's the only one that it survived and barely survived uh, with, without a public database, without using a database at all. It's the, and this is why it has spam and phishing and all the bad things in email. It's because it doesn't have, if it, if it would have a database, even of users, you wouldn't have Facebook today. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have a database. So, so um, that's how we think about it in D-Web. And, and, you know, and I believe that's, that's the future we're heading for. So very excited to do that. Yeah, well, that's really interesting, Ayal. And as, so as a part of this new framework, you, know, you mentioned there's the different groups. There's the DevOps people, there's the product people, there's the marketers, and there's the end users. And normally in a company, you have to get those first three and they have to work together to get the end users. But you're sort of you know, decompartmentalizing or like decentralizing any of these groups. And you could have like a DevOps group that could make a product for different businesses and, you know, really work with anybody around the world. Is this sort of like a, a whole shift in the way that companies may be able to cooperate as well? So, you know, some people say that the reason that you even have corporations is because transaction costs. I mean, at least that was they teach you in business school. Not that I've been to business school, but you know, <laughs> friends of mine have been to business school. And, they, you know, at least they told me that. Yeah. That corporation exists because of transaction costs. So, you know, what happens when transaction cost goes to zero because of blockchain technology? That's a very interesting question. Does Definitely. corporation even make sense anymore? Maybe mm -hmm. something that makes more sense is a lot of independent teams that can, you know, work together and, and you know, maybe maybe work together for a decade. You know, I, I know in other industry, like my friends in the music industry, mm -hmm. working with some, you know, uh, some PA company and, you know, they can work in, for a whole decade with, this, with, with that team of, of, of six people. Mm -hmm. And it, it would, you know, be like a company, but it's two separate companies that just, keep choosing to work together. Maybe that's mm -hmm. healthier than, you know, being forced to work together with, with some people. So, so I think, I think we're going to see a lot of changes, but it's going to happen in a very kind of practical and realistic way. So, you know, if, if we, if I tell you about you know, how it works in D-Web, so, you know, we are building the software and we publish the software. Now, you know, uh, all the, our friends from the EOS kind of the space, uh, you know, the block producers, they, 
they, they learn about it, they can operate it, they, they play with it. It's very easy. It's very easy to set it up. Uh, mm -hmm. it just, uh, you know, it's, it's on Google Firebase. So, and, 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 and all of a sudden they have, you know, a service that they can market themselves, but, you know, they're not really marketing people. They, 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 they don't uh, try to market to end users. They're more like, you know, tech powerhouse, uh -huh. but, but it's a nice demo that everyone can come and see what you can do with the platform. And, you know, it's a, it's essentially uh, gives you, a, again, a decentralized Reddit, uh, if you will, uh, where, where each, uh, each marketer is, is, is his own Reddit, his own uh, uh -huh. collection of, of uh, message boards. And, and, and so, so for for the current set of operators, it's you know it's it's it's, it's great that they can demo it uh, on 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 their domain. But but then we have YouTubers that come to the operator and say, hey, I want to have my own discussion board that is kind of you know really mine, working under my domain. And you know, and those YouTubers, they are the marketers. All they need is just to own a domain or a subdomain. Mm -hmm. That's the only requirement for a marketer. Just have a domain. And that's the most important thing because users go to a domain. So everyone that goes to that domain, whenever they want to kind of access the network, is your users. It's like an ISP of sort. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, you're not the only gateway to the network, but, but you are a gateway. And, and you know, if people are happy with, with, with using your gateway, so you know, it's mm -hmm. just using Gmail. It's not the only way to access email, but it's, it's a very popular way. So... You, you encourage competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's get very kind of, a, you know, practical in, 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 in a way that, you know, the internet really allow those kind of things and we don't leverage them as much as, as, mm -hmm. as we uh, can uh, in, with, with the existing technologies, with, with, with having for the first time a public database that basically all those developers can build for, all those operators can work with, write to, and read from, and all those marketers can can benefit because no one owns their information. If I'm an influencer and I want to create my own community, my own message board, and I I, I don't need to you know to to let Reddit own that community or mm -hmm. Facebook own that community. It can be mine. It can be uh, again mine to the extent that they come to, but but I cannot even take it from from the user themselves because the data is on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So so it it creates a whole different uh, power dynamic. And and you know one of uh, one of the you know first one that we launched is just stable dot com, which is a discussion about stable coins. And the nice thing because it's on the blockchain, the way that 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 it works is very different in terms of curation so yes you can post you can comment all the regular things that you can do on any message board but in terms of curation which is a very challenging subject because you know it's very easy to manipulate with botnets and all that so in terms of curation what we have is a very simple open bidding system essentially for every post mm -hmm. in the system so every post has a banner if you will or as space and anyone can bid on that ad space and whenever you bid you you need to bid at least 30 percent more than the last one in mm -hmm. order to be the sponsor and when you bid more than, than the last one the last one is getting kind of paid back plus you know some bonus if, if you want to encourage that so essentially by by letting the market price every ad spot in 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 your <laughs> essentially community based on, you know, every ad spot in, 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 in every pro post, you can actually find the interesting posts because mm -hmm. you, it's, it's like the difference between, you know, newspaper commentary and prediction markets. Uh -huh. it's, you know, it's put your money where your mouth is. You know, mm -hmm. if, if someone is willing to pay for that ad space, that content is something to look at, you know, it's just some, and, and it shouldn't be the only measurement, but it's definitely something that helps you find the good stuff out of, you know, uh, everything else, which, which is the whole idea of curation in, in especially in very, very large groups. Uh, so, and, and that is also just possible thanks to this blockchain technology that is not just a public database, but by being a public database and that can be used as a public ledger, can be used to transfer dollars as easily as it is to transfer bits 
And so all mm -hmm. of a sudden you can create those mechanisms when everyone, you know, whenever you, 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 you sponsor a content, you know, you actually, you split the revenue to like six ways, mm -hmm. you know, so, so uh, and, and it's all happened in the background. No one, you know, uh, but, but, but it, you know, it, it provide revenue to the, for the, for the previous uh, sponsor, for the uh, mm -hmm. publisher of the post, for the admin of the discussion board, for the marketer, for the operator uh, that, that is running the server, for the developer that build the software. And every time you, you, you sponsor, you actually split the revenue between all these parts, which is again, how you build online services that are public, that are yeah. not just developed, but also operated and marketed by an ecosystem mm -hmm. rather than by a single entity. And, and we think that this is the future of online services, just like, just like open source is the future of software because it's been built by an ecosystem. But with services, it's, it's different than open source. You, 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 know, you cannot just build a service as, as open source and say, you know, it's a public service. It doesn't work this way. Mm -hmm. Software is just intellectual property. When we're talking about services, we are essentially talking about uh, something that needs to be operated, need to be supported. You know, you have users, they have problems, you know, it, it has costs. Mm -hmm. So it, you need money to run the system. It's not like open source software, which is just yeah. a set of ideas, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's actual operation. It's it's like a blockchain, right? The blockchain yeah. needs miners. It has needs yeah. money involved and incentives. And, and, and the same goes for public services. Just it's it's a different layer of public services. Well, blockchain mm -hmm. is like an infrastructure public service. You know, we're getting to the to the era of, of uh, you know um, user level public services for the mm -hmm. end user, not, not just for uh, for developers. That's uh, super interesting, Al. And we're running out of time, but I do have a last question for you. You know, what are the goals moving forward for DWAB and for Just Stable right now? Are you guys looking for more strategic partners, developers, marketers, and how can those groups of people find out more about the project? Yeah. So you know, uh, Just Stable again being one of the first discussion boards. Some you know, some some place that. Uh, People can uh, can experience the platform, see how it works. Uh, when when people join right now, we actually send them, you know, a couple of bucks to kind of try uh, try out the system and 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 upvote posts. And we we're learning a lot from our users, from you know, from experiencing it ourselves. And this is a place where anyone can kind of try it out and think, you know, maybe I want to you know have one one of these of you know of my own. And very easy to contact us through our Telegram group or our website at dweb.io. Always uh, happy to help. But uh, this is the very first step of this uh, public service, which is you know one of the most basic services of the internet history, which is a message board. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just doing it not 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 as a proprietary service, but the way mm -hmm. that we think it should be. Very very cool. The internet is turning into a whole new place. Uh, so thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. I will leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. All the best with DWeb moving forward, and let's follow up uh, in the near future.